Following the events of Moon Knight, we now have two very active Avatar superheroes running around the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, I know there were a few other Avatars also shown in Moon Knight, but their fate isn't 100% known yet, so for the sake of today's video, and I do not mean this literally, let's just pretend that these are the only two Avatars of the Egyptian gods running around, because as far as I'm concerned, they're the only ones that matter at this point in the MCU. During the events of the final episode of Moon Knight, Layla al Fuli asks the goddess Tauret to become her avatar in order to help save Mark from the increasing powers of Amit and Haro. Tauret accepts and gifts Layla with a fantastic new costume and power set. She's fast, she's strong, she got wings, she got style, she's Hippo Knight. Or the Scarlet Scarab, as the director and producers have referred to her. Now, I'm going to be honest here. The characters, stories, origins, and powers of Moon Knight and his supporting cast are a fairly drastic departure from the comic books that they are based upon. The character of Layla al Fui does not even exist in the comics. Her name was a homage to another character named Abdul and his son Mehmet Faoul, who were the first and second Scarlet Scarabs in the comics. The Scarlet Scarab made their comic book debut in Invaders 23, written by Roy Thomas and drawn by Frank Robbins. And I'm going to essentially skip most of the backstory and get to the elements involving the Scarlet Scarab. The Invaders were primarily active during World War II, and the majority of their stories were told during this time period. So in this story, the Invaders found themselves in Cairo, attempting to deal with a group of villains named the Sons of the Scarab. To make a long story short here, the Sons of the Scarab are hiding somewhere beneath the pyramids, working with the help of a local archaeologist named Dr. Faoul to pinpoint the right tunnels that lead to an unknown artifact. Loosely described, Faoul's plan called for the powers of the Human Torch and the Submariner to excavate efficiently without causing irreparable damage to the pyramids. So the other members of the invaders, which is Union Jack, Spitfire, and Captain America, leave to join the front lines of battle to provide a morale boost to soldiers, with the expectation that Human Torch and Neymar will join them when they're done with their mission. Faul leads the two invaders to a time-forgotten chamber containing a ruby scarab talisman and a hieroglyphic inscription on the walls. However, Faul grabs the talisman and is quickly revealed to be the secret leader of the Sons of the Scarab. Faul ends up dubbing himself the Scarlet Scarab and he gains incredible powers from the talisman and attacks the invaders. Now, this might seem like a jerk move at first, but Faul is really just trying to help liberate his country from the war around it. He's able to beat both Namor and the Human Torch, and he travels erroneously to align himself with the Nazis, who he believes will help liberate Egypt from Great Britain. Not really sure why he thought that, as the Nazis weren't big on liberating anything, uh, quite the opposite. However, his alliance is quickly broken when the Scarab realizes that Nazis are in fact assholes. The Scarab then realigns himself with the invaders to stop the Nazis, but following the victory does not directly align with any particular faction or superhero team. The Scarlet Scarab apparently operated in secret for years there afterwards, until eventually dying, passing his journal and history of his time as the Scarab onto his son, Mehmet Faul. Mehmet uses the journal to track down the Scarlet Scarab talisman, and he becomes the second Scarlet Scarab. Mehmet's only adventure I could find was in Thor 326, tracking a stolen Egyptian relic called the Eye of Horus to a museum in Chicago. This book also contains the background information on Mehmet and how he ended up getting the Scarlet Scarab talisman. Mehmet ends up tracking a stolen Egyptian relic called the Eye of Horus to a museum in Chicago, and while he's there, he's mistaken for a villain and ends up in a battle with Thor, who gets the drop on him by hiding in a sarcophagus. Thor's awesome. Scarab actually reveals a bunch of awesome powers at this point. He has over 1,000 times the strength of a normal man, he can shoot crimson bolts of energy, and most importantly, he absorbs the power of whoever opposes him by making direct contact. Even despite these fantastic powers, Thor is able to remove the Scarab with a lightning blast. Mehmet then explains the situation to Thor, and they decide to work together to get the artifact back. They end up tracking the thieves to a hideout and easily retrieve the Eye of Horus. Thor and Mehmet end up parting ways as friends, and the Scarlet Scarab is, as far as I know, never heard of again. Now, obviously, this character is drastically different than in Moon Knight. In fact, in all of the Scarlet Scarab's comic history, he never even runs into Moon Knight. 
In fact, it kind of just felt like the writing room needed another Egyptian-themed superhero and kind of plucked one out from the archives, which is fine. It's not like the character was super well-known before. However, if you are the lone Scarlet Scarab fan who had been waiting decades for the live-action version of this character in a movie or show and these comments offend you, I am deeply sorry. Turning Layla into essentially a loose homage with her own in-universe backstory and motivations is a significantly better story being told than in this original one. Tying the name of the Scarlet Scarab to Tauret and Layla as their avatar is a great new power set and also pretty interesting. Before, the Scarlet Scarab just really kind of seemed like a very similar version of the Crimson Gem of Sidorak which gave Juggernaut his power. I personally think this character is cool even if everything in the MCU isn't even remotely close to following Moon Knight's comic history or legacy. Thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you learned a lot about the Scarlet Scarab. I am sorry it's not the same character as in the comic books, but hey, what can you do? Most of Moon Knight was pretty liberal in its adaptation. Thank you for watching, this has been Nick with Key Issues, and remember the motto, Scarlet Scarab over everything.